Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Barry. <laughs> it is afternoon where you are, but it is evening where I am. Yes, thank you for being so um, considerate to, to <laughs> sort of shift your time scale. <laughs> And as I always say with these Zoom meetings, well, not always, because it's only the second one I've done. So I'm a novice as well. But I always say with these meetings now, you can be at the comfort of your own home, mm. looking great up top mm. as you sit here in your underpants. <laughs> oh, it's, it's actually this morning's dog walk uh, mud is still on my pants. So I'm, I'm glad you're not saying that. Exactly. <laughs> So if that doesn't relax people, I don't know what will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, listeners, I'm not sitting here in my underpants, really. I do have on my jeans, okay? <laughs> and I hope Simon does too, okay? <laughs> yes. Please reassure the audience. <laughs> I, I am fully clothed. I am Good, absolutely fully clothed and appropriately dressed, yes. Good. How have you been? Good, pretty good, yep. Um, I think... Um, Considering for, you know, for, I, I said to quite a few folks, like I spent majority of my working time alone in a dark room. <laughs> so, so so this, this pandemic has not comfy. hugely impacted yeah. my, you know, apart from meeting up and playing with other musicians and, um, uh, and also the, 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 the old folks who I worked with, that's unfortunately closed for the time being, but you know, really, a lot of my time is spent in this room here, beavering That's away. Right. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, I know what we're here to speak about, <laughs> but we can't have Simon Law here, the Simon Law, which is in inverted commas, I must say, and not talk about music, the musical well, career. So we can start with that. And I wouldn't want to talk. I, I, with your good self, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to stray too far away from that subject. I think it's the, <laughs> right. the thing that unites us and unites many folks. Yeah, exactly. You can't talk to Simon Law and not talk about his musical career, his background, and what a wonderful musical family you come from. From your father, I mean, he was the musical leader of the family, shall we say? Well, you know, he, he actually, I, I have to correct you slightly on that, Barry, because um, Excuse me. It, it's it's <laughs> mum, really, who who oh. was the the real musician in the family. Dad was a massive appreciator of music. And I think okay. we got together because of that, mostly. But but he wasn't particularly a player or a singer. My, my mum was a classical professional singer, sang with the BBC singers, sang all sorts okay. of things before before they got together and, and had a, a, a career, you know, as a, as a classical recitalist. So a lot of the, the music vibes come from mum. From your sure. mother? Yes. Right. Who is a Torian, a fellow Torian? I just saw. I, <laughs> I know you, you've met her, haven't you, a few times. Fellow yeah, yeah. Torian <laughs> and your niece. Crazy is people. Oh my God. Torians? Yeah. I'm going to terminate the interview immediately <laughs> headstrong oh my god such a handful <laughs> this is not going well and we're two minutes in <laughs> okay this is not yeah, going well. you see i'm the gemini man i can cause chaos wherever oh, i go you mean the two-faced ones okay yeah, i get totally. you know I, I get why you don't understand totally. us taurians <laughs> totally. i'm just gonna mess with you the whole time <laughs> <laughs> the two-faced ones okay yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. We're trouble, I'm telling you. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> That's the thing. You see, Torians don't swiftly on. <laughs> nonsense. But um, so music started for you with mother, and she encouraged you all to to play and sing and. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And um, really, uh, you know, it was a. a always music in the house and my, I mean my earliest memories are from the West Indies where we lived in Trinidad and I was two when we moved out there so my earliest memories uh, are from the house there which was the vicarage of Chaguanas in uh, central Trinidad and oh, mum sort of singing all the time she used to run she had her own steel pan orchestra uh, 
you know, that won some Stop awards. That. She was she had she her was own quite, steel pan orchestra. Yeah, yeah, man. There's wow. it's all documented in the there's a beautiful story. This the history of Pan, um, beautiful book. And her, she's got her little bit in there, and you know, she she made she, she's an extraordinary woman. She just um wherever she found herself she she you know adapted her music to to where she found herself and um right. you know it's quite interesting i i it's uh it's an interesting story the way it all just fits together you know so how did music start for you when did you start playing i guess i i mean i started playing piano very early on uh, mum taught me and uh and then my, you know one of the biggest musical sort of uh educations I had really was when we when we returned from the West Indies I was quite far behind my schooling so they decided to send me to Hereford Cathedral School which right. and I got a scholarship into the choir there right and if you sing in a cathedral choir you you sort of if you're a professional musician at age 10 you know 9 10 yeah, yeah, yeah. you you do you do a service every day three on Sunday rehearsal before after school it's a crazy life you know and so right. you just, uh, as a young kid, you just sponge all that musical knowledge and singing and awareness and up. And I certainly did, you know. I had actually a very unhappy time because I was at boarding school. And the only thing that really kept me going through that time was um, the music. It really music. spoke to me big time, yeah. Yeah. So then coming into your professional career, how did that start? When did that start? Oh, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I, um, I trained, I came out of school and uh, trained as a primary school teacher. And I taught for three years in Tooting, um, Lynx Primary School for all the Tooting folks. Uh, okay, I'm not far from there as we speak. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. So, yes. and, but I, I had this real bug in me that I needed to do my own music and I decided right. to call quits on the teaching. So you were teaching music, were you? No, I was a primary school teacher. I had a class, you know. Okay. You teach everything. I think right. I, I I probably leaned heavily in the musical direction, <laughs> and they <laughs> yeah. suffered. Yeah, I think so. We leaned heavily <laughs> towards music. Yeah, why so. are, why does my kid know how to add up simple <laughs> arithmetic? <laughs> Because I gave him a triangle. That's why. Because <laughs> I, yes, you know, uh, I used to enjoy doing loads of creative stuff with my kids, but the. The core, the core subjects, I think, fell a little back by the wayside. Yeah, right. Because really, music was your passion, and you were like, "Well, yes, yes for sure." Adding up is is important. <laughs> we enumerate <laughs> is important, but yeah. I but, think it's much more important to be able to play and sing. <laughs> yes, on on balance, I think I favour that one. Yeah, yeah. jazz um, has I, a very important. <laughs> I mean, I I remember, uh, you know, sort of finishing or getting there early there was a piano in my in my classroom and, and always tinkering around with ideas you know before the kids came in or up at the end of school and and often bringing that making stuff up with the kids I love to write songs always right. you know, with whoever I am with so um, but it was a lot of fun but I, I knew that I had something more that I had to follow so I, I kind of knocked that on the head and uh, went to work in a clothes shop in King's Road and just sort my fortune you know <laughs> okay a shop in the king's road can you which shop was it oh i can't remember <laughs> i i, I, I oh, cannot God. remember it was like and then i and then i worked in a bar um it was called christie's it was on uh, wardour street worked as a barman there yeah a bunch of doc jobs like that and started to do our own my, my brother christopher was my manager and sort of uh and joe and i had a band as well my sister joe who you you mentioned or you alluded to earlier the musical family yeah you know we had a band together city heat and right. we got signed to chrysalis and sort of things started to so happen so this was in the midst of the odd jobs that you were doing yeah yeah okay yeah right. yeah and uh just trying to, and i somehow i i had some um belief that i'd somehow kind of get somewhere with it um i do remember awkward conversations with my parents like isn't it something you can just do at the weekend dear you know <laughs> <laughs> after, after work because they just don't understand it do they 
Well, it, you know, I think kind of mum did, but she, you know, it's such a, it's such a kind of um, insecure, even more so, I think now, insecure line of work. So, you know, you know, the famous um, saying, you know, may, may your daughter marry a jazz musician. <laughs> You know, it's, like, it's like the worst insult. Sorry, jazz musicians. You know, I love no, you. you. I love say you. That. You can't say that. But it's like you know, it's a it's a precarious business. It really is. It's not oh, straightforward. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Music, and, um, business, acting. You know, it's all very precarious, as you say. Yeah, and and you you know you have to you have to have a lot of sort of drive really to try and 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 I think support around you too, and I and I'm indebted to my my brother and sister, really for for that time you know because it it sort of slowly but surely we 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 opened some doors up and um, then I I met Jazzy and worked with Soul to Soul and then that burst open. Now we'll get to that in a second. So you, you know, were this you were songwriting and producing. Mm. For the mm. band that you were in yeah so how did the meeting with jazzy come about to well, obviously eventually lead to your partnership with soul to soul and being in soul to soul yeah um well it literally was um i don't know if you went down you probably went down to africa center Barry. I, I was going to try and finish the sentence before you said it <laughs> 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 Africa it was a center indeed on a Sunday on a Sunday Hop night Garden, the Hop only Garden. place to be you know absolutely it was just incredible vibes in there and so Joe and I you know we used to like going clubbing a lot and uh and it was you, you know usually Joe and I and then some some mates of hers or a couple of friends of mine we'd go down so we were already going down there quite regularly Paying, just paying customers, getting in, queuing up, getting there early. Because if you didn't get there early, you had to wait for a long time to get in. Well, that was if you didn't know the people that were running it. But oh. I understand that. You know? so you're, you're, you're ahead of the game then. But the thing is, we I we we made this 12-inch uh, City Heat, and um, as you did back in those days, you know, you you when you did that, you you took it around and gave it to as many DJs as you can in the clubs that you thought would like it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jazzy was number one of the list. You know, I got to get this into his hands. So I did. And he loved it. And they were playing it in the club. And then from then onwards, we got let in ahead of the queue. And we exactly. <laughs> and then I started working with him. So, you know. <laughs> so he That's heard it. the single you used to go and he then saw, oh, let's get together collaborate and do something yeah just got a call you know we're in the studio you want to come down and um oh it was great you know it's just uh i re i remember being in in africa center and hearing because i wasn't involved in fair play that came out before i but got no involved. that was the very first wasn't it? very yeah. first tune and yeah. i remember when he dropped that for the very first time in there yeah and it was like yeah, you know, it was so powerful because this is it's like everybody in there this is our music oh my god this is brand new this is original this is all the vibes crammed into one tune you know yeah it was just amazing and it had dare i say it, it had an authentic sound totally could an have come from nowhere else sound. because that was i'll probably be dragged across the coals for saying it you know but in those days, we were kind of always leaning towards the American funk and soul bands. Yeah, for sure. And it was a sound that they had. And as good as the British soul jazz funk bands were, it was a different sound. Yeah. But when Fair Play dropped, yeah. you were just like, what is this What tune? the fuck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you had no idea, literally, that it was homegrown. Yeah. It just yeah. had, you know, we, I think we were all, and I do credit so much, you know, their, their nights, particularly the Africa Center as, as a sort of, uh, and the scene at the time, the rare groove scene and everything as the melting pot, the, the sort of the, yeah. the crucible, which that sound all developed in, you know, and it, 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 for those of us who were hanging around in that scene, uh, 
it was very natural kind of progression. The music just kind of sprouted out. It wasn't like some, oh, we've got a master plan. We're going to do this kind of thing and this and this. It was just very, very organic. It was beautiful, you know, like yeah. the best things are. They're just very natural flowing. That's you know? it. Yeah. I think that makes a difference when something is natural and not forced. Mm, it's for uh, sure. organic, as you say. Yeah. So, yes, you get to work with soul to soul and and then back to life is born yeah yeah the the most aptly named song in the history of music because <laughs> it never <laughs> refuses to die it, yeah the song just does. just does not go away because a new jazzy sent me a new version oh. that's out now yeah. in celebration of the 30 years is it yeah yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful remix, very oh, Fela Kuti Afrobeat style remix of uh, Back to Life. By, he sent by it a guy to me the other day Saint. because it's the celebration of the yeah. 30 years. 30 years. I mean, that's how long we're talking, Barry. Goodness me. It's scary when you think that 1990 was 30 years ago. I know. It used to be 70s. That was 30 years ago. <laughs> I know. You know I, that's what I do. I sort of think, yeah. wait a second. When I was... Like when when I first started doing this, I look back and thirty years would have been the exactly. like early sixties or something. What something, the hell? Exactly. Now you're talking thirty years ago was nineteen ninety. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. Literally, literally. But um, it, it's very it's very you know humbling really, and and I'm so grateful to have been involved in that stuff because there's nothing better than when you create something that stands the test of time, you know, and um, is still loved, you know, because, because it's very, it's easy. Or it's, 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 um, you know, we make music in our time, you know, we create in our time and who yeah. knows whether it's going to last or not. You don't know, you know, That's you just right. do, yeah. you just do. And, um, and it's one of those that has, as you say, stood the test of time, yeah. keeps coming back to life. Yeah. In actual fact, it never loses its life because that's one of the staples in most parties. I know. I, I, I say to people, board, something was in the water then, man. <laughs> you know, in most parties, across the board, not in any particular genre even, just everybody knows back to life. I know. And of course, you were involved in Keep On Moving as well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The whole record. Oh. The whole record, really. I mean, uh, I remember going to a dance wicked um, do you remember those nights? Of course. <laughs> and I think it was the, uh, um, what was it called? The Electric Ballroom in Camden. Correct. It was one of the nights Dance Wickets they had in there. And Jazzy had brought along a, um, a rough copy of the tune, Holding On. And it was before we would put on the, the um, beautiful uh, Zulu chant singing on there. And guess who was doing all the backgrounds on it? Muggins here, <laughs> and I and I was listening to this, and everyone was dancing and stuff, and I was thinking, oh, jeez, I hope that doesn't that cut that that mustn't be the finished version. <laughs> I was hearing all the all the wrong stuff. <laughs> the beat was good and stuff, piano and all that stuff was baseline great, but oh, yeah. Um, so, but you know, it was very exciting because we were testing stuff out all the time, you know, and seeing how it felt in a club and. Um, yeah, really, really beautiful. Yeah, but those two memories. for me are outstanding. Back to life and keep on moving. They're the I've two got biggies. The vivid memory of hearing keep on moving in a party for the first time in the mm. days when you had great house parties, not mm. the days now where everything's, you know, clubs, bars, proper house parties, mm. proper sound system. And you know, those boys with those speaker boxes don't joke. They're trying to destroy their neighbors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally. And I remember the bass line dropping in mm. Keep On Moving after Karen does her intro and a significant moment, I have to say, very significant moment. Yeah. yeah. Musically. Yes. Again, you're going, well, by then, you know, it's sort the of soul and you're like, yeah, this is actually homegrown talent. Mm. Yeah, you know? be, be a beautiful time, you know, and just a, a blossoming of 
of talent and and, and of, of uh, inspiration that just came very much from the, the, the club scene. You know, we were all immersed in that and immersed in, I think a special thing about that time was when I think back, there was, you know, there's early house music. There was, you know, R&B coming from America, some, some UK stuff, but most of the R&B at that time was from America. Absolutely. Early hip hop and, you know, reggae too was being played. In certain clubs, you'd hear all those genres. It was of, eclectic. It's it was so eclectic. eclectic. And then, you know, don't forget. Which made that it interesting. Reg- Pardon? Which made it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't just like now you pretend to go to a place and it's one genre. All night. Yeah. Yeah. I, that, that didn't happen back then. No. And it was so beautiful. So, so as, a, as, a, as a musician, you kept hearing, you know, uh, Mr. Giles Peterson's line you know joining the dots man you just go wow i wonder what if i put those two things together if i kind of took the vibe from there and there but you're hearing it loud in a club you're dancing to it that's when the inspiration really hits you know yeah and, yeah mm. well you got two grammys for that we did we did indeed two yeah. grammys yeah i Very mean just the nomination that. is just getting a nomination is 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 something big, but to actually get two, not one, but two. You know, it's a weird thing because um, I, I I never, I, you know, it was nice to get that, but I never sort of fully understood the importance of that until I came to live in North America. I live in Toronto now. And, yeah. you know, gra- the Grammy Award is seen as a very important award now and probably it is a bit more so in the uk but back then it was like oh, okay it's like but actually it's a really yeah important... but you know i think there's that thing of regardless <laughs> what the name of the award is i mean well obviously whether it be an oscar or a grammy mm. which are the bigger you know mm, award mm, bodies mm, mm, mm. but it's just that recognition of even though you do something because you love it and it's got that personal Thing to you because you're doing it out of passion and and love mm. it's the recognition that other people are loving what you do yeah that's it, what it's it, about so sort of peer recognition is, yeah. is is important it sure is yeah and i think i think that probably means more as you get older as well you know like at the time you tend to think you can take on the world you know yeah um when you're young, but uh, I, I'm very, I'm very grateful for those awards. They, yeah, they you, know, it's, you know, it's that recognition and acknowledgement of, even though you're doing it for love and it doesn't feel like it's hard work, it is. You're having yeah. to put in hours to create and write yeah. and produce and get the yeah. sound right. It's hours of work. Yes. And you know, when you get recognition for what you've done, mm. you can't, you know, snigger at that or no no it's undervalue it, it. It's, you don't have to I, I i often say it's been very helpful to me because it's a door opener always you know yeah. people people are willing to um take you seriously and listen because you know you've done such such and such you know so that you it's know lovely. even if you wrote it in your bedroom at the end of the day it was globally <laughs> five recognized. minutes you know <laughs> Globally recognized. I mean, sometimes the best things, time spent on something in music doesn't necessarily mean quality at all. It, it, it it's yeah. a very, very um, uh, elusive thing. You know, the, sh- the the simplest, most quickest things can sometimes be the the most successful, and that's the beauty yeah. of it. Really, you know, you never know. You just never know. <laughs> But I mean, you've got to write with some. Did, did you write "Missing You" as well? Yes, with Kim yes. Yes. See? Yeah. Yeah. Talent, talent, talent. Hit yeah. after hit after hit. Yeah. Kim, Kim, Kim's a beautiful soul, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's many, uh, many people that sort of came through the soul to soul doors, really. Um, that uh, there was a lovely song. It's one of my favorites, actually, called "Dreams a Dream." And um, that that's another one, a, um, Love Enough, you know, um, Victoria St. James sang Dreams a Dream. Yeah. Uh, Penny Ford sang uh, Love Enough, you know. It was Karen yes, that's it. right, because Penny Ford, Ford was there at one stage as well, yeah. wasn't she? Yeah. Um, a lot of people, as you say, have been through the Soul to Soul stable. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah it was it was always that kind of collective vibe you know very, yeah very sort of revolving doors a few key people but um lots of guests artists and stuff and you know you see that much more you see that much more commonly now but back then it wasn't so so common i guess yeah yeah well uh, i mean mm. but you've written with shante moore maxi priest james yeah. taylor yeah the all, all amazing people you know like uh and when you when you do create music with people, it, I saw someone talking about this the other day. I can't remember who it was songwriting, but you know, you kind of it's a bit of a weird situation because you you if you sit down and write some music with someone, you get to know them very quickly on this certain level, very yeah. intimately, really. You know, there's a there has there has to be a connection. If it's just all just job job job, it, it's probably not going to have much of a vibe. So you kind of you know, uh, you may not end up spending huge amounts of time since or or whatever, but you, you do have this real deep connection with people. Yeah. And I feel I feel such a connection to all those folks. Shante, you know, uh, JT, Maxi, uh, Nadine Sutherland, you know, some amazing people that I've worked with. Um, yeah, the bond that you created in that time is special un, it, because you're un, creating yeah. together. It's un it's unbreakable, really. You know, it really is. Uh, it's it's amazing, and I that's what was so great about doing my record because I got to basically go back in time and work with all these people again. Well, yeah, because I mean, you did the album, two thousand seventeen, two thousand seventeen, and it mm -hmm. featured again. It was a collaboration of all, all those these people folks. through the years. Yeah, it really was. It really was a sort of um. That was such a joy, you know. Uh, really quite amazing to be able to do that you know I felt very very uh, great because that was the last time I spoke to you when yes. you were promoting the album yes indeed so yeah that was fun three years already wow yeah it is yeah well it's always a pleasure to talk to you so it doesn't matter how long the it years is. slip by um, I I you know it's that really that that seems like a year ago or something to me exactly but, you know it's, you know it's crazy yeah we did that lovely interview in the place in Brixton in Brixton yeah in the yeah. Ab above the above That's a bar right, there was a lovely kind of yeah yeah um with the DJ box and everything but as yeah. you said it seems like it was just last year yeah but in actual fact it was three years ago man so yeah I know but yeah but to the point in hand sir which is what this is all about music is life mm. the movie mm, the movie <laughs> <laughs> so i saw a very interesting thing this morning just looking um you know the uh the actor vigo mortensen yeah he has just made a movie called falling about uh alzheimer's about dementia um okay. and it's i i just wrote a letter to him actually to share our film with him because okay. it's such an interesting subject and i do feel a lot of people are are, are becoming very interested in it and looking at how the arts can kind of contribute to the awareness of dementia and it's it, and it's such a prevalent thing in societies now you know it, it, as, as all the pretty much all the populations around the world we live longer dementia is going to happen to many yeah. more people you know and, and i mean we... yours your interest really started because of your personal connection yes. to dementia through your father, who through, was through dad, yeah, who was you know diagnosed in when he was only sixty nine. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. Thank you for remembering those details. That that's it. It was a long journey with dad, you know, like a long, very slow, slow, slow journey. And um, the family, you know, mum was extraordinary. Just dedicating herself to looking after him until until she really couldn't anymore and then he had yeah. to go into a home but you know that uh, she had like about probably about 15 12 15 years of looking after this yeah man because who, was, he it was diagnosed at 69 but he didn't yeah. die until he was 83 or 4 was it absolutely 83 yeah, yeah. so long yeah. long long time yeah really yeah, you know it, it, and some folks get get uh, get diagnosed and, and it's quite quick you know it's really very different for different people manifest in very different ways um as most things in life as most know, things you know all going through the same thing but it's different you know reactions different effects 
with different for sure. people. For sure, yeah. What 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 is so amazing? And I want to try my, the point. One of the main points, personally for me, in the film was to show um, show other people involved in music, not necessarily musicians, but musicians certainly, but anybody in the music business or music field to, to, to realize how, what, what an immense resource and what we're in touch with, you know, with our love of music and our creating of it that can benefit people so much. And, you know, that there's all kinds of ways in which you could discover to get involved. Um, you know, that there's just, music is so important in this field and it and it really is transformative it's it w i think we do quite well in the film to show how wonderfully uplifting and transformative music can be you know well yeah music is is very therapeutic yeah for yeah. many conditions in many yeah. different circumstances yeah i mean even if you're just having a bad day and you would say well we're considerably normal i use that word loosely of course but you know it's um, you can be in a bad mood and you put on an earth, wind and fire tune and you change, for sure, for sure. you know, because it transports you to that time, what you were doing then, where mm. you were, what mm -hmm. you were wearing. And it brings a smile, you know, mm. it lifts your spirit. So music is very therapeutic for many it, different conditions in many different circumstances. In absolutely. Um, it, it's an interesting thing. Um, what one of the the key sort of parts of the the film because it was very much backed by research uh that the, the the person christine jonah simpson was the the key person who put the whole film together and her and a team of other researchers in in dementia uh sort of wanted to show how they 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 have um this model of uh, dementia care called relational caring Right. And it's, it's the, the, the basic idea behind that is that, that the arts and particularly music is brilliant at this, really helps people form relationships in a community, in a group. So, you know, you can right. play some music, as you described, you could play some Earth, Wind & Fire. Actually, by the way, I indoctrinated all the folks in that place. They're all huge Earth, Wind & Fire fans now. And rightly so. You can't <laughs> it, live a lifetime on this Earth and not be <laughs> touched at some point by no, Earth, Wind & Exactly, fire. like no, nothing. And, you know, when I read uh, his books up there, Maurice White, My Life with Earth, Wind & Fire, <laughs> you know, like when I read his book and I just... I just, I always sensed this with Maurice, but like, you know, he, he totally knew this, right? And he set out with that band to create music as, as medicine, you know, yeah. he really did. That was his vision. And it, boy, oh boy, did he do it, you know? He lived up to it. He lived, <laughs> he up, lived to it. up to it. And it has surpassed his lifetime. Totally. It's, it, it, it surpassed his lifetime. And I think probably that's what, most of us want to do is the legacy you leave behind which is not necessarily your children or but it's the legacy you leave behind of what you'll be remembered for and mm. how you made people feel and how you made mm. life better mm. Mm. You know? indeed indeed and you know that the, the idea of this kind of relational caring is that that music is unique in its ability to just bring people together it, it something i mean it truly i would say it's a sort of a magical spiritual thing that that occurs you know and it's sort of um i just witnessed this time and time day in day out little miracles with with the folks um you know and it and it's like you know, one person will simply be just sitting there smiling, maybe tapping their foot. Other folks will be getting up and dancing. Other people will be talking. It, you know, you all kind of join together. It's in the, you know, and and I in the in the film, I write songs with the with, with the with the folks as well. You know, um, and it, I I wanted to kind of bring any all the expertise or sort of experience I had with music production and writing and bring it right into that setting which is a lot <laughs> which well, is a lot why not you know yeah, like i bring lot. all my computer stuff down and record and everything cuz i i the uh, it's academy for arts and intergenerational learning yeah 
That's yeah. quite a mouthful. That my teeth yeah. nearly fell out then. Yeah. But um... <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is. A, it's it's sort of it's the idea is that you know, it it's not um, a place where you just sort of the concept was not that that it was a place for just sort of going and and hanging out or just of course you do that but but it was more to do with uh creating uh, you know sometimes uh somebody would do a little talk and there'd be some learning involved you know you kind of you can sort of it's a more holistic view of of um i was going to say treatment but the the researchers really sort of shy away from that really that it's not treatment it's more like enhancing the life and celebrating the life of the person living with dementia there and then how they are we are not trying to reverse something or you're not trying to kind of treat it as such you're, you're trying to say that look all this is possible still in fact yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a beautiful old guy who talks in the movie and he says you know we're all aware in dementia how a lot of the, the brain connections stop working and, and that. But he says the thing is there are millions and millions that still do. And you can tap into those. And music is brilliant at tapping, in, tapping into those. Yeah. You know. But and, I mean, I know your interest in it obviously is based on your experience with yeah. your father and the care and everything yeah. that he went yeah. through. Yeah. But how did the connection with the academy come to be how did you For meet me. them or, yeah well it's interesting because i i was uh, working i was doing some work in uh, a school and some music and we and i did some um I, I worked with this this actress uh and she was um we we sort of co-did some sessions together um uh Oh my goodness, I, I should remember her name. This is a, quite a while ago now. But but anyway, she was involved in this new place that was starting up and, and her father had Alzheimer's. And, right. you know, she said, would you be interested, Simon? And I said, oh my goodness, of course I would. This is like, I, I've been thinking of ways that I could get involved. And I was just sort of, it really, it was an incredibly fortuitous thing that dropped into my lap, you know. And I thought, yes, absolutely, I'd love to and get And it involved. seems that more often than not, the interest is because you're actually experiencing it yourself. You're having yeah. the experience with somebody close to you or yes. whatever. So, you know, you, yes. you're interested in it to, to try and make the difference in some way. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I, I think um, it's such a it's such a. Uh, you know, dementia manifests itself in such different ways with people. And, and I think, and you know, it's hard to understand the difficulties that are faced and the, and the way it all works and how to be with someone who, who's, who, who is living with dementia. You know, even in the early days, you start to forget a few things and you think, wow, is that just normal or is that, you know, and then it progresses and progresses and, and you right. know you learn a way to be with the person which really is is being very present you know very present because i mean it must be particularly challenging if it gets to the stage where the person no longer even recognizes you mm. well that happened with our dad yeah yeah absolutely uh, it sort of it is challenging but then As you progress through it, you sort of, <coughs> you, you kind of start to learn how, how to sort of, um, as your loved one progresses through it, you start to learn how, how to just bring joy to the moment, really, and li okay. lightness, you know. Right. Uh, there, there is a, a, early on, usually, there's a tremendous urge to sort of correct all the mistakes, all the sort of forgetfulness, correct it, correct it. And, oh, no, no, it's Thursday today. No, we do that. Oh, you've, but, but actually, s some point, usually, you kind of realize, actually, that's all kind of like, hmm, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It really really. matter. It's just, if it's they're just confused a, a, what day it's a new day, you know, let's yeah. just off we go and if you have to repeat something over and over fine you you don't say oh i've said that to you already you just say, oh no that's okay you find creative ways to say the same thing over and over <laughs> yeah yeah you know and it, and it becomes a sort of a joy really or jo a sort of there's humor as well there's a ton of humor in it you know um uh 
I have to tell you a funny little story with my dad, right? This is, it, it was down in Sydenham uh, where, and he, they were still living with my sister, Joe, mum and dad at the time. And I'd come over from Canada and we went for a walk in, in the park there. And dad and I are walking along. And at that particular time, often somebody living with dementia will zone in on a particular long part of their history and they'd be obsessed okay. with it you know he was obsessed with this time where his brother tim and him and his dad when he was a kid basically living in the country and they'd go and work on a farm or something and his brother did that but he wasn't that keen on it and he was talking on and on and on about his dad <laughs> dad dad was talking on and on about his dad about his dad yeah then, then there was a little pause in the conversation and he said so that enough about me um tell me about your dad he said that to me, you know, and it was like, whoa. Really? It, it was, it was just, wow. Okay. But and, and then we, we giggled. Had he, been, had he been diagnosed or you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he'd yeah. He'd been diagnosed yeah. by oh, then, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this was, this was kind of starting so you, to happen. Because, I mean, that a, would be quite startling if he hadn't been oh god yeah diagnosed yeah, that, that and then be... suddenly came up with something like that you wouldn't be sure are you joking or are you yes you know? oh no by this stage he he was probably about 10, 10 years having been diagnosed oh, right. and, it, and it was a slow yeah you know, dad just he just very slow because physically he was perfectly healthy did nothing wrong with him physically at all it's just the mind yeah. going you know yeah and um, so he could still go for quite long walks and chat away, but would often repeat himself and totally not really know what's happening next, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but this was I mean, a very it, graphic it, it, moment where he said that to me. I just, you know, and, and it was, I suppose I mentioned it for, from the humorous point of view because, you know, there's a way that you could be really depressed by hearing that, or you could feel sort of like, wow, it's so sad. Yeah, but you know what? Life I, I, is, and comedy is irony, isn't it? Oh, so, yes. You know, it comedy is, is irony about real life situations. For sure. So, yeah, you know, I so agree. And being able to see the humor in a lot of things gets you through a lot in life. For sure. You know? I, I would often say it, at the bit of where when we did all this work and i hope it comes through in the movie uh, i do encourage people to watch this movie it's a it's a beautiful little film but there's a lot of humor and a lot of laughter in it and to me if you put you know all about this barry you put humor and music together come on <laughs> come on yeah it's, a, <laughs> it's, all it's over. a winning formula isn't it the winning formula it's just winning those two form make sure you got those two happening yeah make people <laughs> laugh make them dance Throw some food in because food is always yeah, welcome. food. You know what I mean? It's a... Fifth sustenance. <laughs> yeah. Few <absolutely>. libations. <laughs> Are you sure that's water in there? Because you seem very, very. It, it is water. I can assure you. Sure. I've, I've, okay. I've got a regime now to drink lots of water every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very good. Yes. I've just finished this. Yeah, well, yeah, but you're later on in the day than me. Too far for me to go and get another bottle of glass. So. <laughs> I I am still so early afternoon, man. Now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, we'll wrap this up now. Okay. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> yeah, but as you say, you know, people seem to have a lot more interest in this subject and topic now because, as you said, people are living longer. Yeah. And there are more people now that have elderly parents like yeah. myself, yeah. you know? Yeah. My mother's 95. Fortunately, uh -huh. there's nothing like that. Alzheimer's or, you know, That's amazing. Dementia. What an age. But she can be a demon when she's ready. She, she will fight you back. And need I say, she's Torian, okay? So <laughs> you having a Torian mother know exactly what that means. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, so um, you, you're now living with the effects of being around an elderly person and, and life changes completely, you know, mm, the responsibility mm. changes completely. Mm -hmm. And it is quite a responsibility. And you see in their own way, the frustration comes out because yeah, in her case, the head is still as sharp as a knife, remembers everything. But she's frustrated with the fact that she can't do what she once did. Isn't that interesting? You know, it's it 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 it, it 
well often it's one or the other that go, starts to go i mean when you see a fo some, some folks who are like oh my goodness i mean there were some dear folks who used to come who had parkinson's as well as dementia you know and it's like wow that's that's a tough way to isn't one to enough to deal with yeah. let alone having two you know yeah it's um yeah but um you know like even so, you know that one of the one of the guys there had been a, been a really um, you know eminent professor of history at U University of Toronto, and he amazing man, like really intelligent, quite quiet. But one but but one day he he used to, he got into dancing and he was really into dancing. <laughs> so one day his wife comes to pick him up at the end of the day. <laughs> and she can't believe her eyes and she says to us later he didn't even dance on our wedding day like exactly. I, I didn't know even i didn't even know he could do that and here he is at 87 well, how wonderful is that you guys were able to unlock that well it shows you the power of music yeah you were able to unlock that you know yeah. it's there it's sort of it, it's somehow the all the connections are misfiring, but there's some parts in the brain that still go, oof, I don't I want to have a dance. No, I'm going to get up and have a dance. <laughs> this is a good tune. <laughs> Who is that man? What have you done to my husband? <laughs> she, she, she could not believe her eyes. And it was just the most joyful thing, you know. And then, um, then you know, you'd see them having little dances sometimes, the two of them. And, oh, my God, it would just it would make, it make your heart break to see this is so beautiful you know yeah. just amazing so the mu movie is called music music is life, is life. yeah right and it's, and it's only 50 minutes isn't it 50 it's minutes it's a documentary yeah. film yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we're sort of it. and it's on um if you look it if you look well there's two ways you can access if you look music is life film.com right all the links are there music is life film.com did you get that, people? Musicislifefilm.com. Yeah, all one sort of word. But if you search that as well, Music Is Life Film on YouTube, it'll pop up as well. Right. Um, and there's lots of other little bits and pieces attached to the film now. We made a, a karaoke version of the song that I write with the folks. So you can, and it's called uh, Music Takes You Higher, you know. And um, Okay. And the, the lyrics. Well, yes, I watched it the other day and then I browsed through it again today so that I knew what I'd be talking about to refresh it in my mind. So, um, yes, I, I remember the, all of the actions, all of the songs. <laughs> well, it's, Very a, it's, interesting. A, it's a charming, it's a charming song. And, you know, these lyrics came out of se se sessions where I had everybody and we're all trying to kind of brainstorm about what, what music means to us. Yeah, you know, and it and out it comes, you know, and then I threaded all these bits together. You hear some of the folks playing ukuleles in there. There's a little ukulele group. They're all singing the song, you know, singing. Everyone can sing. And um, some folks playing percussion and stuff. And I just brought everything I could bring to the, the table yeah. as well, you know. Well, I mean, it is it's an interesting subject. And I think for the fact that it's, it should be interesting to everybody because it can happen to every, anybody. Indeed. It can happen to anybody. You don't have to be at that stage to be interested in it. Indeed. You know, and I think if you've got parents that are over a certain age and you're of a certain age, it would be of interest because, you know, mm. it could be imminent. It, it, mm. it could happen to anybody. Mm. And, um, I know. And it's good to, good to realize, I mean, I think as well, I wanted to sort of show... Because e even if you e even if you you're not a musician, or it doesn't matter. Who, you know, if you love music, your love of music can really connect to someone. If, if it's a loved one who has dementia, or a friend, or whatever, don't yeah. forget that you have that ability to really connect with them through music. You know, and um, it it can it it, it sort of um, bypasses a lot of the regular kind of stuff that you, you know, thinking that in fact, our, our, our kind of relationship to music doesn't go through the normal cognitive channels. It's a different part of the brain. They've right. shown, the scientists have shown this. So 
And that's why it's often one of the very last things to, to sort And there's of nothing in particular that you can say you need to avoid doing to avoid getting dementia? W was that ever told in his diagnosis, your father? Is there anything that... Um, that well, uh, yeah, I mean, they, you mean like uh, preventative things yeah. or... Well, I mean, you know, they, there's more and more coming out about this. Apparently, you know, if you learn a language, if you learn a new language or you learn a musical instrument or you learn a new skill uh, when, you're, when you're fine, you know, that really yeah. helps keep keep all these neural pathways functioning. Okay. Um, but but having said that, you know, dementia can happen to anyone, anybody, absolutely yeah. anyone. The fittest, most cleverest people can get this thing. You know, like the, the history professor. You know, there's, there's, yeah. there was there were quite a lot of doctors who came um, had been doctors and surgeons who came to our our, our place. You know, and it, so. You know, I, I, I think that, that they're still looking at ways that can really, you know, there's no treatment for this yet in terms to make it to reverse it. Um, you right. can sort of hold it at bay for a little bit with some meds, but after a certain time, dad took something, I can't remember what it was called, Aricet maybe or something. And then, you know, it's no point taking that anymore. It's not having any effect. Any know? effect, yeah. So, you know, but, but you know, medical science, man, it just it's you, you know, at some point so they'll they'll figure it out, I'm sure, you know. But well, we um, hope, we hope, yeah, yeah, we hope. Yeah. So, music is life, the movie, you can get it on YouTube. YouTube, if you look, music is life film. Music yeah. is it's fun, it's it's rather nice, really. Music is life, the hashtag music is life is hugely popular. If you just do that, like a million and trillion things will come up. But if you add film at the end, hashtag music is life film, then right. you'll zone in on this, you know, through yeah. Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook. But our website is very good because it's got all the bits and bobs that extra things. So music is life film dot com. OK. Yeah. yeah. Well, as always, mister, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure, Barry. Even better to, to see you. With technology now, we can do this. Yeah. And I have to say, I am the biggest technophobe on this planet. Trust me. It's oh. taken me so long to get used to doing this. But now... You're it's... a pro now. You're just like, making it look easy, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you haven't seen the team... Sitting there in your underpants. Exactly. <laughs> With the team of 40 people that are behind the screen that you yeah. can't see. <laughs> They're all going it's crazy. Like, What's he touching now? Don't <laughs> touch that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, listen, lovely to talk to you. And lovely stay to talk to you. well and healthy. And you when too, all this man. madness is over, hopefully we'll see you back in London soon. Yes, I. I, I this is the longest time, actually, I've been... Uh, since I moved to Canada before coming back to Toronto to, to London, so I really miss it. I will be back as soon as I can when it. When yeah, all this I mean is that's over. just what the world is at the moment. It's a bit it crazy, really is. isn't it? It's yeah. It's um, it's not good at the moment. But no, hey. it's like there's lots of places in the world I'd love to visit, but that's all off the cards right now. Mm. Yeah. Well, listen, Mister. Again, lovely to Bless see you, man. Lovely to talk to you. Love All the best you. with the promotion of the movie, the film, and yeah, we'll put it out there. Thank you so much, Barry. It's lovely You're to welcome. talk to you as ever, man. You take care. Take All care. the best. Bye.